One Very of the guys nice. I've been told over and over again was the greatest PUA of all time. I'm sitting there hanging out with him and he's barking at this girl. And I, and I, I take him to the side. I'm like, hey, bro, these girls know me. Like we, they'll leave with us right now. They like me. Right. You don't have to bark at them. Yeah. They'll go home with me. But it was so funny because he couldn't transition from cold approach to like. What was uh, Ja Rule? Ja Rule is still at yeah. the Fire Festival, bro. Ja Rule is Untouched. still making money from doing appearances. He's more famous. I saw Ja Rule the other day at some party, and like people are coming up wanting to take pictures with the man who ripped them off. And how about this one? The best one of all. P these girls in Florida who are doing TikToks with OJ Simpson. Oh, that shit oh. is mind blowing. <laughs> bro, like what planet are we on? Anything for clout. You know what would be a fascinating book yeah. that maybe your buddy could write? Yeah. Is this obsession with fame that is now becoming so prevalent yeah. and so obvious to us. Like anyone with clout, it's like inherent within us. If you have clout, you just want to, like Logan Paul, I'm a big fan of Logan Paul, yeah. like his content, but like this guy goes out in public and it's just like people, I, you, you see on the vlogs, people just want to be around you. Even if you're in this, this moment of time where you're hated, Andrew Tate, yeah. it sounds like you're friends with him. Yeah. Like, He's so hated, right? But yeah. anytime he goes out in public, you just see people just want to be like just anything, Bro, pictures with him, it's, talk it, to him. It's girls hit it's me nuts. up and tell me how much they hate him. Because, but, but to be fair, I was friends with Andrew before he became famous. Uh, not famous. He maybe had four hundred thousand followers and no blue check mark when I first met him. And then the same girls would like want his number. You it's know nuts. what I'm saying? Like, is he hot? Like, the, I, I'll have girls be like, I hate him, and he's super hot. I'll have <laughs> I'll have women absolutely say that to me. That's it's wild. A, it's mind blowing. So like, going back to the Logan Paul thing. One of the examples I like to make is like, who could get in front of venture capitalists faster? You or me or Logan Paul? Logan Paul probably. Oh, right, right, but Logan Paul's not famous for venture capital. Right. He's just famous. That's it. And they, they, this goes back to uh, one of the tenets of Men of Action is status is status is status. When I meet girls who are like the best girls I've ever met, like low body count, super beautiful, in the gym all the time, family, women, multiple master's degrees, run their own company. When I meet their boyfriends, 500 body count. The guys who've like slept with like six like yep. male strippers with neck tattoos. It's like former men, like gigolos. Like, and you're like, what in the world's going on? Why? Because we as men sometimes we start think because we judge women. And I, I try not to, but like when we judge women is that this is a good girl, this is a bad girl. We start thinking our status is the same way. This right. is good guy status, this is bad guy status. Take a look at Machine Gun Kelly before yeah. you start thinking of good guy status or bad. Like look at, like when you see Ke Kendall Jenner, is that the one with Travis Barker? Which one's with Travis Barker? I can't remember, Kendall or Kylie Jenner, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Look at, look at Travis Barker and then he's with these fine ass women, yeah. like anyone he wants. Stop thinking there's good guy status and bad guy status. I there's just status. Your president a star and got elected. There's just status. Yeah, clout is also a word you could, you could throw in there for Instagram clout. specifically. Yeah. I have this, belief system and mm -hmm. I'd love to share it with you because yeah, you're one of sure. the few people I feel like I could have this conversation with. So I did cold approach pickup. I was obsessed for from sure. 2012, 2015. We're, we're roughly. skipping ahead. We were going to talk about this for a while. Yeah. 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 So I was super into this world and loved yeah. the idea. And once you get that superpower, you actually go out and you're like, oh, that cute girl, you, you can go talk to her and for get sure. her number. Sure. Wait, before I had to, I had to be friends with her friends and get, anyway, mm -hmm. so you do this thing. And then I realized there was a ceiling for yeah. me and I would go into a bar and the cute girls over there there was some discrepancy between how I perceive myself and I couldn't, I would never walked up to them confidently. And I realized I need to improve my status, my lifestyle, my income, wealth, career, how I perceive myself, all this stuff. And so I, I focused specifically on gaining as much status as I could. That mm. was my pursuit. Yeah. I believe personally that after guys go through that little sleep with everyone phase, I think they should pursue status above all else because my opinion is status is like an umbrella, money, if you want like the clout game and access to women through clout, like that's obviously becomes available, but also who you, who you meet. For sure. Like, dude, I was working at a desk job two years ago and now I'm hanging out with people with like real clout, like you, like real clout. I don't have real clout yet. Maybe yeah, no, you, you, you hang out with all like these successful people. Yeah. But anyway, my social circle now is with some of the people that are biggest on the platform. This yeah. was in, within two years. My income's gone up, my connections, my social circle, the yeah. quality of people I hang out with, all this has gone up specifically because I have like some clout on YouTube. And I would be curious to hear so, your so opinion of that. Let's look at this. So, so let's like say status is the overall set, and it, there's two subsets. We'll tell you one of them is called clout, and the other one is called competency. Okay. So a competency, like you're famous because you're really good at what you do, right? Michael Jordan would be an example of having status because of a high level of competency. And with that comes clout as well. And then some people, they don't have a high level of con I'm not saying that Logan Paul doesn't have a high level. Obviously, he's probably he's an incredible podcaster, very, very talented uh, content creator, but his clout 
is what, where he gets his status from. Does yeah, that make and the sense? Kardashians are always the best example. They're they were great, the, the great, famous for being famous. Famous for being, idea. that's a great example. Fam, famous for being famous. I, I don't like to put Paris Hilton in this category because she makes you think she's way dumber than she is. She's yeah. way smart. That woman is a billionaire. She has more, Paris Hilton has more money than Kim Kardashian. A lot of people don't realize this. 100% she does because wow. she has that makeup line. Now, Kylie may have more money than Paris Hilton now, but Paris was a legit B billionaire without Conrad Hilton's money, without her great grandfather's money. So that's, that's one of the things that I thought was really interesting. Clout is just the thing where I'm famous for being famous, but competency was another thing. I, like for instance, uh, Dr. Buss is famous for being competent, not for the, for the clout. I wanted this, pro this program to be an expression of both. You kind of call people out for just the clout with no competency. So they have yes. status with clout with no competency. When we talk about, I need to improve myself, not everyone, not every one of our clients or everyone who follows you or everyone who's in pickup or everyone who's in red pill or whatever, they, not all of them can become famous. Like Bilzerian talks about fame brain. They yeah. can't all become famous, but they can all become competent. They can all become the best engineer at their work. They can all become the guy on social media who like just has the coolest photos, travel photos of their small group of friends in Des Moines, Iowa or Wichita, Kansas. They can all let increase a level of competency, which gets them to a level of status. That's possible to do. But like, I, th I don't think everyone can become famous, right? And that's right. interesting because you talked about you wanted to gain as much status as possible in yeah. order to get to that place. And it is really interesting because like if I took you on stage at uh, at Zook, I promise you somebody would recognize you. More than me, obviously. You have half a million followers on, on YouTube. And we would do that and you would see this this kind of thing where like you done all this work for Cold Approach and like I'll take you on stage at Zook, we'll be behind Dead Mouse, like five feet behind Dead Mouse, and it'll be the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life, and you do no work. And the reason why is the crazy part. When I, I, I the first time I experienced this was at the Playboy Mansion. We're at the Playboy Mansion, and every I'm thinking these girls are gonna be mean as to me because I'm nobody. Because I'm in the Playboy Mansion, you got past the they're rope. so nice to me because they think I'm some TV producer mm -hmm. or they think I'm some reality star or I'm an the athlete. The more mystery, the better. That's who, exactly Who is right. that guy? Why just, is he here? Just, Why do I not know him? Just getting on stage at XS, just getting uh, uh, to the Marquee Sky Deck during EDC, just getting in the Playboy Mansion, just getting into the VIP of the Maxim Party, just standing there. Girls are just like, who is this guy? And they have to be nice to everyone. Yes. When I was in the Cold Approach game, and that was one of the most important parts of my life. And I learned a lot about dating, women, cold approach, uh, communicating with women, everything, uh, all the above. But I found I was in Houston at this time and I was going out six nights a week yeah. doing the typical like young 20s, yeah. you know, hardcore cold approach pickup. And I found myself when I went to the bar, the kind of the higher status bar, when you have the cute girls, all four girls at a table, I didn't feel confident going and talking to them in this game. I just felt like the game was rigged against me. It was sure. almost like when you're investing, you're like, it, it, I'm it not is. seeing something. It, it is. is. It is. The bar yes. rigged it against you. The bar yes. wants to sh on you for being poor. Always yes. remember that. In a nightclub in Vegas, there's a girl guy. His job is to go find all the pretty girls in GA and pull them away from GA so that cold approach pickup artists have no shot with them. Take them to a table with a guy with a 15K minimum. Make those girls drink all his alcohol so he keeps buying more bottles. That is the business model. Yeah. Two on the low status people. Always remember that. Go ahead. And I, I had this belief at the time where I saw it. I was like, I don't believe I can attract these girls with any type of consistency. Mm. How do I gain? And when I say status, I'm not some guy that's like out to clout chase. I'm not like trying to be famous for famous. I just wanted, I just want, I saw what the benefit was with you. Ha when you have like a blue check on Instagram mm. or you have a social circle full of very successful people, whether that's on Instagram or business people, I just wanted to be around that group of people. Well, anyway, um, what I really respected about you is you were always on the periphery of this RSD and I would see you and go, okay, this guy is the only one that's hanging out with beautiful women. Mm. All the other guys claim to be. He's hanging out with beautiful women. That I could see the way they react to him. You had this philosophy of being friends with them and I could clearly tell that they respected you and they looked at you as an equal friend. The, the women. The women did, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, this guy seems to have it. And then and th at that point in my mind, I was like, I'm not playing the right game. I want to play a game where girls have some type of perception of me up front where they're, we're at least on equal playing field. I know this is like an uncomfortable talk, topic for a lot of people and I know you know where I'm going. Yeah. Is it's not an equal playing field. Like if not. you walk up to a girl and she doesn't know who you are and she's really hot in a bar and she knows she's hot, like good freaking luck. Yeah. You, you need you need like the best verbal game and I or, just didn't have or, it. Or Kindly Myers as a wingman. That's yes, another thing that helps. Yes. And we were talking about that before. So anyway, that's that's what I'm getting at is yeah. I wanted to live a life where I was around successful people and I had cute girls with me and going to the bar. Not one of these lone pickup guys that you, you and your buddy go out in your ten dollar you know button down t shirt. So here's here's the problem. The, the problem is the way pickup was taught was that cold approach was 100% of pickup and that there right. was a subset of pickup or game called social circle. That right. is incorrect. 
I don't even call it game. It's just being a normal human. That is social circle. 2% of game is cold approach. Cold approach is inbounding the basketball. Uh, social circle is the entire game. Right. And this is, it, the way it's taught, though, is because the metrics are so unattainable. You feel good about yourself because you approached a woman. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, well, I feel good about myself. Therefore, I'll just keep doing more and more cold approach. And, that, and then here's the other thing. If you've ever seen me with a, a successful interaction with a woman, it is boring. Shit. I lean in a couple times, she laughs, I don't touch her at all, and we just leave together and go, go eat like at a, a pizza place in the middle of the night. It's so boring. If you filmed me, it would be like, dude, this is the most boring shit ever. But what do, what do we see with the infield videos that guys were doing? It was yeah, They were the spinning them around, monkey. dancing yeah. monkey, they would bark on them, they would lay on the ground, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they would spit. I was one of the big, one yeah, of the guys nice. I've been told over and over again was the greatest PUA of all time. I'm sitting there hanging out with him and he's barking at this girl and I, and I, I take him to the side, I'm like, hey bro, these girls know me. Like we, they'll leave with us right now. They like me. Right. You don't have to bark at them. Yeah. They'll go home with me. But it was so funny because he couldn't transition from cold approach to like, uh, like the, the social circle part of it. The other thing was, you know, my, my affiliation with RSD, I was just going out every night in LA and there was just these dudes and I was just lone. I fucking hate LA. And I was just like, ah, oh, these guys are funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? And some of them are like, they're trying so hard. And some of them were just kind of like this lovable, like nerdy guys. And they had like, they were coming from a good place. And I was like, okay, f it, I'll go out with you guys. And then I would try to like get them into clubs and it was a disaster. It never would work. And I would introduce them to females. And I was like, hey, this is my female friend. And the guys were like, I don't, what do I do with your female friend? I'm like, yeah, just hang I out don't have her. that skill set. I don't understand. I don't understand that skill. <laughs> I know how to go talk to her if she's standing on the opposite side of the bar, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, hey, <laughs> the, uh, dude, I would have girls come into LA when I was in Vegas. I was like, hey, take care of my homegirl, take her out with you guys and have a good time. And these PUAs were like so confused. Like, what do you mean take her? out with us i don't know how to do that and uh you know i just saw that happening that that the whole situation happening over and over again i was just friends with owen and them and they would ask me to speak at stuff i didn't make any money from any of the, that affiliation not one single penny they did not pay for my hotel rooms i've never worked for rsd it was just a function of like hey you guys are trying to improve yourself cool if you want me to speak i'll come i'll come help you and speak and meanwhile i was just you know, i was working in finance and hosting bikini competitions that's all i was doing i didn't make it as a business until december or, or december 2019 i did none of that and so it was a, it was it just was a, a lifestyle. Yeah, it was that's just a lifestyle. what I love, man. And as much as I clown on a lot of these gurus, I respect a lot of it. The fact, the freedom that they have oh and they God. live a cool lifestyle. Yeah. And I know a lot of it is fake in the sense that they're just showing the highlights, but yeah, I, I can't deny that a lot of uh, what you show a lot. I want, I want that life. I would love to live a life where you have beautiful women around you and you're going out and being social two nights a week or so. Have you ever done cold approach? Did you ever get into that world? So at I all? used to work. I was a, a pro. Here we go. I was a approach coach for mystery for a, a a couple oh. of years, yeah, for like two years, uh, but mo more for Love Drop, like Love Drop, uh, uh, Chris Odom. C Chris would like, they'd say, hey man, we're gonna go to a boot camp, do you wanna come? And they, they would just come, they would get me a hotel room, that was it, they wouldn't pay for my flight. And for two years, I would go help them. And it wasn't like pickup, I would just have no fear, I have no fear going up and talking to strange women. But it was, ne I was not doing what they were doing. I was yeah. literally going up and just like making Way friends. Way healthier approach, yeah. man. Like looking back, I think there's, there's good from the pickup world of going out and getting over yeah. that fear of talking to a girl you find cute and getting mm. over the fear of just asking for her number and understanding uh, progression and mm. her consent. Like, do you ask for her phone number? Do you ask her on a date? Like all these steps. Mm. But man, looking back, there are a lot of unhealthy behaviors in that world that 